Hello everybody and welcome back into the channel where today I'm going to be giving my review of Dungeons of Hinterburg. Dungeons of Hinterburg is an action adventure RPG that puts you in the shoes of Louisa, a lawyer who is looking to escape the mundanity of her life by vacationing in Hinterburg, a village set in the Austrian Alps that recently became a hotbed of tourists looking to conquer the various dungeons that have appeared around Hinterburg. Hinterburg. Now this game surprised me with its solid combat, great art style, and puzzles that had a perfect blend of making me uh, stop to think but not stop to rage too much, you know? Um, they had abilities that were specific to each reg region, like the snowboard, tornado, or the weird jelly cube thing, uh, which made those zones feel unique in their own right, with puzzles in the environment and dungeons built around those what those abilities let you do. Now, the snowy region of Kolmstein, Kom Kolmstein for existence, uh, for instance, felt like a ski resort, which required you to snowboard around uh, to reach the various dungeons in that region. While in the birch tree filled forest of Hinterwald, they had no snowboarding. Instead, you walked and you walked around, but you could summon a tornado that would help you carry you over some thorns or uh, get you up onto a ledge or whatnot. Uh, these abilities also were usable in combat, allowing you to create some interesting scenarios, such as locking enemies in that jelly, jello like cube, sending a ball of electricity to that cube, thus causing damage over time to all those trapped within it. Really cool. I enjoyed the combat overall, while sometimes enemies felt either spongy or a cakewalk depending on how difficult the, e or the area or dungeon I was, was in, right? Each dungeon had a rating of 1 through 9, 1 being the easiest, 9 being the strongest. Uh, it reminded me kind of of like, like referencing Ski Resort again, like a, I haven't been skiing or snowboarding, but you know the Black Diamonds, the ratings for that, or trail ratings if you're hiking. Uh, it reminded me of that, very, very reminiscent, reminiscent of that. I think that. Uh, some of the stronger dungeons were locked behind the environment and were unlocked by completing a puzzle in the area, by progressing the story, or by increasing your relationship with some of the villagers. Dungeons of Hinterburg operates on a day and night cycle. You start each morning with breakfast and some story beats, and then you choose where to go for the day. By noon, you arrive and spend the afternoon exploring the region and finding the dungeons. You can choose to relax in a spot and look out in a vista, and that can increase your health, increase your physical damage, increase your cold resistance or frost resistance, I forget what they call it. Super interesting there. Or you go into a dungeon, once you complete it, that completes your afternoon. When you arrive back in town in the evening, you have the option to walk around town to either buy supplies, upgrade your gear, and or spend the rest of the evening with one of the various characters you meet in Hinterburg. Some are residents of the town and some are from out of town, just like you as Louisa. I found myself looking forward to the evening, not only for the various storylines for each villager, which vary and they do have some humor and a lot of heart behind each of them, uh, but also because as you level up each relationship, you got something in return. Some villagers gave you Hinterbugs, Hinterburg's currency form that was spent for dungeons uh, and such. You can unlock, that's how you buy health potions, gift for villagers around, uh, stuff like that. Uh, some of them unlocked an extra health or stamina slot, and some unlocked weapon and armor upgrades. Also, you can pet a dog. You can have a relationship with a dog. It's okay. It's not like that. This is a good game. But you can pet a dog, okay? That's what matters. Now, this idea is similar to what Persona games do, apparently. I have not played a Persona game, but I've seen that echoed a ton, that this, it's a similar system, day-night relationships affect and give you stuff that can help you in the, the story or, or throughout the game and whatnot. Um, it kind of makes me want to play a Persona game. They're on Game Pass, so I might, I might dive into it, uh, but I haven't played it, but that's just what I see other people talk about, and uh, I've seen it enough where I thought it was, men men thought it was worth mentioning there. So there. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll play uh, Persona, we'll see. Overall, Dungeons of Hinterburg is a fantastic game that echoes the elements of Zelda and Persona while firmly being in its own being its own thing and is surprisingly very chill and relaxing. I highly recommend giving this a shot. It's out now on Steam and Xbox platforms and is currently a time of recording. It's on Game Pass, so download it. Well, let me know what you thought of Dungeons of Hinterburg if you played it or if you're going to play it. Again, I highly recommend it. Comment down below your thoughts, like the video, subscribe to the channel as we continue to grow. Thank you. <laughs> that last one was dumb. <laughs>